What you are looking at right now is pretty much the PC I have been using back in 2014. It has an i5-3570 and a GTX 650 in it. It is no surprise that this config is not the greatest anymore because it has never been like that in the first place. This is a mid-range configuration from around 5 to 6 years ago and it's not struggling to keep up with today's games. Today I want to explore whether this old PC can become a decent mid-range gaming PC again with just a single upgrade. To begin our experiment, let's record where we're at with this PC as it is. The 3rd gen Intel i5 processor is a quad-core without hyper-threading, meaning it has 4 cores and also 4 threads, which has been the standard on Intel's side for the last couple of years. So most mid-range gamers had to work with their quad-core slash quad-threaded CPUs. This exact CPU model, being the non-K variant of that generation's flagship i5 CPU, is actually not that far away from a more recent i5 variant, like the 7th gen i5-7500, which is pretty much identical, being within 10% of the older model's performance. Meaning that the CPU in this case has definitely aged rather well in comparison to the GTX 650 it is partnered with. The GTX 650 we have here is Nvidia's budget graphics card from the Kepler-based 600 series. It is rather unexciting with just a single fan, a brown and glossy PCB and a single 6-pin PCIe power connector. Other than the CPU, which is still very usable, the GTX 650 has aged very badly as a short trip to user benchmark shows. The current mid-range models like the GTX 1650 outperform the GTX 650 by about 360% indicating very poor performance in gaming. But how bad is it really? Well, let's take a look at our baseline performance tests for this PC. I gathered a bunch of games ranging from eSport to immersive single-player titles from the recent years. As you can see, the results are not great. Just three games even come close to the 60fps mark, and often only with lowering the graphics settings so much that everything becomes a pixelated mess. In greater detail, GTA 5 is playable with an average of 65.8 FPS while running on the lowest graphics settings available in game, though it was not necessary to go below 1080p. Borderlands 2 is also very close to the 60 FPS mark, and this even with medium settings, though it should be noted that Borderlands 2 is a 7 year old game, so these results are not really surprising. But again, the GTX 650 does give you a playable experience. The Witcher 3 tells a different story though. Even with the lowest settings and the drop down to 720p, the GTX 650 could only deliver 28.9 FPS on average, which for me is not a playable experience. CSGO, or also known as the toaster test, gives our GTX 650 the best results on this chart, with almost 70 FPS. This game is definitely playable, even on hardware that is this old. Ark Survive Evolved is the opposite though, as this game runs at just 18.1 FPS average, and this even with the lowest settings and with enabling the DirectX 10 mode via the Steam launch options. The story seems a bit better with player unknowns battlegrounds, where the GTX 650 reached a 42.8 average, which is not a great experience, but it's high enough so that you might be able to enjoy the game. Last but not least we have Minecraft, which has the BSL shader pack installed. Here our graphics card managed only 20.9 FPS average, which is not playable. Purely Minecraft without any modifications though, should be playable. Now it is time to get to our upgrade. The Radeon RX 570 4GB. This graphics card costs only a bit more than 100 euros and is about comparable with the before mentioned GTX 1650, which beat our GTX 650 by a significant margin. Installing the RX 570 is pretty straightforward. Just remove the screws, disconnect the PCIe power cable and slide your graphics card out of the PCI Express slot. Then we take our new RX 570 and do the same in reverse. One notable aspect of the RX 570 is that instead of a 6-pin PCIe power connector, this card needs a bigger 8-pin connector. This is so that the card can pull the additional power we will need to run it. 
The GTX 650 has a TDP of only 65 watts, while our new RX 570 is rated for power consumption of 120 watts, which is almost double of what the GTX 650 needs. This also brings us to a problem you might encounter while upgrading such a PC with an RX 570. You need to make sure that your power supply does deliver the needed amount of power for the car to run. To check whether your power supply will meet these requirements, I recommend using tools like Be Quiet's PSU calculator. In this case, the PC is using a 750 watt power supply, which is totally overkill for this kind of hardware, so we don't have to bother. Once the card is installed, we can now boot the system up and begin to uninstall the NVIDIA drivers and install the newest AMD drivers. Once that is finished, we can get to testing out the new GPU's performance. I conducted two tests, the first one with the exact same settings as before, and the second with new settings that really took advantage of the RX 70s performance. To no much surprise, all games now perform with an average FPS above 60, making every game playable with the old settings. It is with the new settings where we can see the real improvement. Not only can we get playable frame rates now, we can also use higher graphics settings, making our experience a lot better. GTA 5 now runs on high settings with 4x MSAA and FXAA enabled, which gives us a 71.7 FPS average, which means we could go even higher than that. Borderlands 2 can now be maxed out, but regardless of the graphical settings, the frame rates are about the same and the GPU usage frequently drops down from 100% which means that we have encountered a bottleneck of some sorts, where we can't go any higher in FPS regardless of the GPU or CPU we use, having both of them not utilized at 100%. The Witcher 3 has been set to the high preset with all post-process effects enabled, giving us FPS very close to 60, which makes for a great gaming experience. CSGO now really shows why it's also called the toaster test, since we now get FPS so high, you could think about hooking this dated PC up to Enthusiast level 140Hz gaming monitor. Arc Survival Evolved now also achieves FPS close enough to 60 to really enjoy this game. Here I was able to use the high preset, which I honestly didn't expect since Arc is such a poor performer, even pinning an Enthusiast graphics card like an RTX 2080 Ti at 100% at 1080p. PUBG also runs into a situation where our FPS are more or less the same, regardless of whether we use the low or medium preset, all while not using the GPU or CPU to their full potential. But as before, the FPS are a lot higher than 60, enabling us to go even higher to the high preset or even further than that. At last, Minecraft took kind of a big hit in FPS with the new settings. We now use the Ultra preset in the shader options and have an increased view distance of 12 instead of 8 chunks. These settings make the RX 570 run at an average of 49.1 FPS, which might be too low for some people, but there's always the option to lower the settings a bit to enjoy higher FPS. Now that we know what kind of a gaming performance upgrade the RX 570 yields, we can now take a look at the raw graphics performance we now have. To record that, I ran three synthetic benchmarks. First, we will take a look at the Time Spy benchmark. Here the RX 570 totally blew the GTX 650's 206 points out of all existence, with a score of 3790. In Fire Strike, things are similar. While the GTX 650 got a score of 1883, the RX 570 got a score of 12713, which is again a giant improvement. Lastly, in Unigine Superposition, the GTX 650 got a score of 1602, while the RX 570 managed to get 7119 points. So in terms of raw graphics performance, we can see that the RX 570 is much better prepared for modern, hard-to-run titles. So if you happen to have a CPU like the i5-3570 and you are on the search for better gaming performance, you should check if such a graphics card upgrade would benefit your PC, since a graphics card upgrade is among the things that are incredibly simple and yield a giant performance upgrade. So, that's it for the video. If you have seen my videos in the past, I hope that you were pleased by the way my videos are changing, as I now try to produce videos less frequently, but with better quality through the inclusion of music, more time spent while editing, and my ever-growing skill set. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you feel I have earned it, you can leave a like or even subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you all for watching.